Hello my friends, it's Danish here, we're back with Galaxy. So the good old Super Mario Galaxy. Right, now when we left off we just finished the first star of um, Honey Hive Galaxy, if I recall. And we can finally get in here without being pestered by the tutorial text. So, what have we got? Um, yeah, yeah. No, oh, that's the wrong button, sorry. Wrong button. I keep forgetting the switch is A button is on the right, whereas you've got the X button and the A button on the Xbox controller, which is at the bottom, so... Yeah, so I'm, I'm surprised, honestly, that I don't get it mixed up more often. Alright, King Caliente's Battle Fleet, first mini-boss. Right, so thinking about it, because I think... I, I like to think the last video was a fairly decent length. I think it's around about 35 to 40 minutes. So, I mean, obviously, give me a shout if that's too long or too short or whatever or whatever. How many times can I say whatever before it becomes redundant? Oh, and we made it. I mean, I'm pretty sure we can still come in here, can't we? Hang on. What exactly do I miss here? Oh, I th okay, it's in the little music note thing. I missed one. It can be a little bit tricky when you're constantly going onto going onto the walls, going around planets. The controls do kind of change a little bit, and you have to kind of adapt. It's usually not much of an issue, but it can mess with your precision of movement a little bit. Never so much that it um, you know screws up where you're trying to go or what you're trying to do. Thankfully, on the plus side, I did check, and whatever noise my mic is picking up whenever I twitch my bloody leg doesn't seem to actually be picking up. Well, at the very least, whatever noise it is isn't really noticeable. Hey, there we go. Okay, I only knocked one. Oh, oh, never mind. There's a couple. Easy. GG, easy. I thought I screwed myself a little bit there. Yeah, it's another star, isn't it? Hopefully we can do this fast enough to do the chain jumps as well. If I don't get stuck on the pipe, that would be nice. Come on. Get in! That's one, and that's two! I can only imagine how painful that must be for the chain jumps. Why are these guys immune to electricity? Oh, sorry. Oh, no, that's the wrong button. Sorry, could you just give me a second? Where's the... Oh, I forgot to turn the uh, volume down on my TV, because I've got my laptop going through my TV. Not my laptop, my PC. And that was Discord. Sorry, hang on, there we go. And now my chair's moving away. There we go, right. Center, that's better. Oh right, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, so I got I got my PC running through my TV, and I got my um, I got my Switch going through my monitor because now I can actually have some headphones in, and I can um, I can actually hear what I'm doing rather than the other way around, with, which I had to do with the PS2. Because again, my um, because the PS2 uses an analog signal, and my monitor can't do analog signals. It, like, it comes through, but then there's like a little pop-up thing that says, oh, it can't read the signal. 
If there's no signal in five minutes, it'll shut down. And I can't instantly have that and then keep trying to fix it. And keep uh, turning it back on every single five minutes. That wouldn't really work out. So I essentially had to play it through the TV, which I, obviously I can't shove headphones into. And just play without being it without really being able to hear what I could what I was doing. It still baffles me that I managed to get all nine um, all nine bonuses on that because it said that I was still missing what like forty odd thousand points. Hey, nice. It, it keeps feeling weird. You'd think that with only three hit, with only th um, three hit points normally, even with six, given that um, you know I've got the special mushroom for it, you'd think you'd feel a bit more um, a bit more vulnerable, especially because I'm used to 64, which has eight hit points and no way to extend them, but still eight, which is more than you get, even if you extend them here. But I keep forgetting that every hit only takes one away, whereas a lot, most hits in 64 take away at least two. And honestly, it kind of feels easier to get hit in... Well, no, I don't think it's that it feels easier to get hit in, in, um, in 64. I think it's just easier to heal in Galaxy. Well, me rambling when we're already nearly done with this bloody boss fight. Like I said, unfortunately, um, Mario never really gives you properly difficult boss fights. They're kind of just always punching bags with faces. Except not like the one in Smash Brothers, because that one actually wants you to whack it. Still, third start. There we go. And I think... Yeah, I think we're pretty much done for um, Good Egg Galaxy, for now at least. That, I think, is a bonus galaxy. Yeah, because usually there's two regular galaxies, two bonus galaxies, and a boss. Oh, a loop a loop Right. I forget exactly how to control this. Because obviously back in Galaxy, you just had the Wiimote and the Nunchuck, and usually the motion controls just come from the Wiimote. Which, again, that's another reason I'm doing this on the Switch. Is because my Wiimote works... As does my nunchuck. But the batteries don't last three hours. So I'd rather not play through the episode. I'd rather not play through and then halfway through the video, it just... The battery runs out. Okay. All oh, right, I actually have to do it. To turn left, yeah, I, yeah, I still got to do motion controls with the left Joy-Con, not left right. Apparently, I don't know my left from my right. Hold down P to speed up. Yeah, I would rather be able to do it with just the controller. But apparently I'm not allowed to do that. At least then, if I had the controller, I'd be able to use the the pointer and grab all the star bits. Oh, I, I, I can. I'm use. Okay, I can use the other Joy-Con to um to jump. I can use either one. That works. I don't think I can use the left Joy-Con to steer, though. Yeah, I can't. Okay, but it keeps jumping accidentally. Yeah, 
You'd think this would break so many health and safety regulations. No safety bars, it's... And given how floaty it is, it could be... You could so easily fall off the side to... Well, you wouldn't even be dead. You'd probably start it up before hitting any sort of ground. Okay, I tried to jump, but... There we go, now it's jumping. I tried to jump, but it wouldn't jump. Still one, so no big deal. And obviously because I'm so far away, I can't get all the star bits. Well, any of them. In fact, it looked like they despawned because I was so far away. Alright. Yes, we'd like to save. Thank you. Okay, and not much I can do but go back to Honey Hive. Bit of trouble on the tower. I didn't see that windmill the first time. That's, so that's something I can't help but um, agree with the masses. I mean, Mario 64 was obviously a very... Um, for its um, for the time, it was quite revolutionary, given that it was the first real 3D platformer. I mean, give Nintendo some credit. They are pretty good at making some... Wait, what happened? I... Okay... That wasn't just me. I was genuinely stuck in place there. I'm pretty sure I'm still within the first hour of gameplay. And I just found a bug that almost softlocked me. I don't ever... I mean, I got this... I think... I'm not sure if it was the day of release, but I definitely got it within the release window. Did I really miss that? And I'm, but yeah, I've never seen that glitch before. In fact, thinking about it, I'm not entirely sure whether or not I've, any, I've seen, until now, any real glitches for Galaxy. Not without, you know, looking for something. Never mind the coins. I'm not really sure how you're supposed to get um, the maximum amount of star bits from that box. spinning I'm assuming obviously I just again I was a bit too quick with it got him it just got me wondering what do you think Mario's kill count is because I mean it's not insignificant One thing that just came to mind as well. One thing I am dreading is the purple coin mission for this level. Purple coin missions can be quite stressful. That's um, I see that is where a fair bit of the difficulty is in this game. But again, just because it's always one of those times where you got to get 100 purple coins, and there's always one 
that you missed, but you can never seem to find it. Honestly, I'd say that's a problem I run into in quite a few platformers. Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. Much as I love that game, that's another game where I have that issue when you're trying to get all 300 opals in every level. It's always one of those moments where you got, you're got you on like 298 or 299 and you just can't find the last one. I mean, there is a cheat which kind of lets you see exactly where something is, but it's not on the map. It's only... It only works in-game and when you're far enough away from it where it doesn't really matter. So when you're trying to find that one particular thing in a vast level like that, you need to be able to see it from closer. But yeah, like I said, it's the problem. I need to keep recentering it. It does quite often feel like it, um, like the marker drifts, usually to the right. Again, just tap the R button and it's all fine. So it's not exactly that big a deal. I mean, if if it, it was, if it was more tedious to reset. Like if it was one of those things where you'd have to go through a menu every single time, then uh, yeah, it would be a bit of a problem. It's probably why I didn't dislike Star Fox Zero as much as everybody else did. Don't get me wrong, I understand entirely why people don't really like Star Fox Zero. Unfortunately, it does make me think that because you know it was so poorly received, it makes me worried that about um, the future of Star Fox. Whether or not it's going to join the likes of F-Zero in the hell that is never basically getting any sort of development. Nice. Sorry if you can hear the clicking of the mouse. Again, it's just me checking Discord because... Um, one of the guys went just went live because um, basically I started streaming because I've essentially got um, got in with a bit of a group on Discord, which is actually run by an old high school friend of mine, Paul. Lovely bloke, lovely bloke. And um, yeah, it's a, a group of those, and it's basically Discord itself kind of notifies everyone in Discord when one of us go live, including myself. Many thanks, Paul. I would link the Discord, but I suppose, again, part of me makes me think whether or not it's actually okay to do that, because it's not my Discord, it's Paul's. But yeah, what I'll do as well, I'll, um, if you, but if you do want more information on that, because there's quite a few really lovely people in there, I will, um, I will link Paul's Twitch, which I'll put it on screen right here, it's Paul Paul Plays, so, uh, go give him a shout. Give him a check, and and, um, and he tends to link his Discord there as well. So yeah, head to his Twitch, and um, you'll find out what we're all about. But yeah, that's kind of why I find, kind of got back into streaming because it's not the first time I've streamed. I kind of restart. I did do it a couple of times before, back when I was. Um, Back during the heyday of Black Ops 3 Zombies. In fact, it was before Der Eisendrack came out. I mean, unfortunately, I, that's the latest iteration of Zombies I've played. I haven't touched Black Ops 4. And I haven't touched Cold War. And I mean, I've heard horror... I've seen Black Ops 4 Zombies. I mean, they really went in the wrong direction when it comes to gameplay mechanics. From what I've seen. And from what I can tell, people who have played it... Most cer for the most part, they do most certainly agree. It's not all bad, from what I hear, but uh, it wasn't the right direction. So I mean, with that in mind, I'm not really surprised 
that uh, they kind of went back to the usual, you know, buy, you know, perk machines and all that for Cold War. Though to me, it does feel like, um, it does kind of feel like Cold War's kind of lost the heart and soul. Just because there's no, um, there's no set characters anymore. We, obviously we can't have the likes of Dempsey, Nikolai, oh yeah, we got a star as well. Yeah, that certainly didn't take long, did it? But yeah, we got the likes of, you know, Dempsey, Nikolai, Takeo, and of course Riptofen. But I mean, can't really have them anymore. We've got Samantha back, at least. We finally got Sam. But I mean, aside from her, there's not really... I don't know where the hell the marker was there. It was just gone. Okay, yeah, it must have been way off, because obviously if you do that... If it, even if it's, you know, it's still fairly close to the screen, so you can still move it, but if it gets too far away, it just disappears. So it was obviously a lot further from the centre than it should have been. Oh, we've got Bowser already. Or at the very least, we've got a boss. I keep forgetting, it's not Bowser here. That's every two bosses. Um, yeah, what we'll do, we'll, um, we'll finish these two, because I know these two have at least one secret star. I know that's got two, because that's got, um, the speedrunning comet, and there's another secret star that we can't get until later, and that one's got the purple, um, purple coin. No, no, sorry. Honey Hive has the, um, the doppelganger uh, comet. Or whatever it's called. The one where you've got to race against, you know, Cosmic Mario. I think it may also have Purple Comet, but I can't quite remember. I know that because there's two kind of Honey Hive style galaxies. Um, and I know both of them have a Cosmic Star. A cosmic comet. Or whatever it's called. The one with the race. And I know at least one of them has purple coin comet as well. No, I don't want to do that. Damn it. Okay. There we go, we got it. Alright, one more in Honey Hive and then we'll tackle the boss. And off we go. Big bad bugaboo. I'm fairly certain every single main level has at least one proper boss fight. They're usually fairly simple though. No point in going for that life, because like I said, on top of the game throwing lives at you, it's a really easy game. Just barely, sh barely missed his ass. And that time I was a bit too early, and I just got a second bit of knockback. <laughs> Oh, screwed that up. No, no, we, no, we. <laughs> so what was I going on about this game being fairly easy? All right, my bad. That was entirely my fault. It's the star bits respawn. Tell you what, we'll go and grab that life now. 
There we go, it's like nothing even happened. Right, can we... Yeah, there we go, got it. Again, I'm not entirely certain how many times I can do that before they stop giving star bits. Oh, it's three, so I got it right the first time. Right, there's not really much point in me going over there, except for getting the bee costume. I was about to say we could do with another coin. But that mushroom would also help. There we go, thank you. This wasn't too far, was it? There we go. I will say, I just remembered, in fairness, there is one thing the coins do, the coins actually have a use for, and that's, um, as B Mario, they slightly restore your flight. So if you, you know, pick them up while you're in the air, it'll just restore just a little bit. And, of course, air as well when you're, um, when you're underwater. Really, that much distance. I think you're mostly doing that for the height, not the distance. How did I mess that up? Boom! There we go. Right in the head. I keep forgetting the camera tends to just focus on him. Oh, I got the positioning right, but I timed it poorly. There we go. Boss down. Aside from me screwing the aiming and or, and or timing, fairly simple. Oh yeah, and uh, water turns you back to regular Mario automatically. just really not wanting to cooperate. Alright, Bowser Jr.'s robot reactor. Excuse me.
I know you don't get out of it, anything out of it, but there's something satisfying about just knocking a Goomba into the black hole like that. So obviously with these um, these Goombas, they're just a tad bit more tricky to deal with because you can't really spin them properly. I, I don't think you can spin them to, you know, to beat them. They're a bit more awkward to jump on once you spun them, and that's pretty much the only way to beat them, to actually bring them down. So they can be a well, not even tricky, just a little bit annoying. Oh, come on, turn around and hit it. Okay, I think I screwed it up a little bit. There we go. Is I really just trying to justify the idea that a Goomba can be annoying to beat? If you're going to make such a large, you know, imposing robot, you'd make him a little bit faster. I mean, yeah, within five seconds, we've climbed onto its leg, and now there's nothing really you can do. Except hope that bullet bills are enough. His eye <laughs> His eyebrows are just too thick. I oh I didn't even see that second one hit, to be honest. Can you actually have to stop hitting the ground? I think this may be the longest it's taken me to actually beat it. There we go. Done. That is a Death Star style weakness. Huge hulking mass of destruction beaten by a tiny, tiny, like a tiny single person with one bullet. Just because that one weak spot is so exposed. I mean, I mean I've watched Force Awakens. I can't even remember what they did to destroy Starkiller Base. Because I've watched it only the once, and that was. A good few years ago now. I'm not too fond of it myself. I, in fact, I know a lot of people say it's probably the best of the movies, and of all the movies made since Disney acquired the license. But I didn't even really like Rogue One that much. It was just the, it was mostly you know the comic relief from the robot being a sassy, you know, being a sassy asshole that I liked the most. Congratulations, you're being rescued. Please don't resist. Or, or whatever it was. Just the sassiness of that robot was what I liked the most about Rogue One. And of course the scene with Vader near the end. Aside from that, I didn't I thought it was kind of underwhelming, to be perfectly honest. And uh, as a result I haven't gone anywhere near Last Jedi or Rise of Skywalker. That's just me. We're talking about someone who likes the prequels, though, so... Does my opinion really matter? Alright, well, there's nothing really... There's nothing more we can do with the, uh, the terrace... Uh, dome, so it's just a fountain. I th I would like to think that's a fairly good... No? Okay, put them down. Damn. 
I think that's a good uh, that's a good spot to end it. So, thank you everyone for watching. Leave a like uh, uh, and subscribe if you would like to see more. I would very much appreciate it. Also, don't forget follow me on Twitch at Danish here on screen as usual. Still streaming Monster Hunter World. And I'll be honest, I'm still not too certain how far I am from finishing that, because I've still got to fight um, the Elder Dragons. That's, you know, Teostra, Kushala Diora, and Valhazak. Valhazak is going to be pissed. It's going to be easy. Let's be honest. I'm not looking forward to Kushala. I'm at least hoping I'm going to be able to get a ranged weapon against that guy. Or at least not ho not Hunting Horn, because as, I've, as established in the most recent stream on... Um, on the 19th, on Monday, I'm uh, I'm not cut out for hunting horn. Oh, and as mentioned earlier, check out Paul's Twitch as well, because like I said, I am on Discord, and we are part of... It's a fairly... Well, I wouldn't say it's a big group, but there's a fair few people there. I would imagine most of them came from Paul. Uh, came from Paul's streams. But uh, if you would like to know more, follow Paul on Twitch as well at Paul Paul plays. Lovely bloke. I can tell you that right now. So, thanks everybody for watching, and I'll hopefully see you all next time. Take care, everybody. Danish out.